Good morning. And welcome to worship here at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Long Beach. Uh, and those joining us online, there is a uh, note, there's a correction in the bulletin that I want to make people uh, aware of. Our final hymn, our sending hymn for the day, is not the one that's printed there. It's not Alleluia, we sing your praises. We sang that last week, so we have a little bit of a misprint. There are these things that you may find in your uh, pew. It's a, a cranberry color thing. They're called hymnals. Remember those? We're going to use those for our sending, our sending hymn. So our sending hymn for today is Baptized and Set Free, hymn number 453 in the hymnal. We're going old school today. So I just wanted to, to make that announcement, and I'll remind us uh, when we get to the uh, sending hymn as well. Uh, once again, good morning, and I invite you to stand as you are able. We'll continue our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, your bountiful goodness fills all creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well in body and spirit, we may with grateful hearts accomplish all that you would have us do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated. And I'll invite our young people to come forward for our children's chat.
Well, good morning. Yay. Hmm. What do you have to do to keep clean? Get a shower? Yeah. But we do the shower in under how many minutes now? Everybody got under five minutes, right? Everybody have those timers that they got in the mail? A little hourglass? No. No. Have those sorts of things. Yeah, we shower, right, if we get dirty? What if our hands get dirty, right? Wash them, and we know that we're supposed to how many seconds? 10, 20. Man, we've just been through this COVID thing, right? You're supposed to wash 30 seconds? Something like Wash a lot, right? Um, yeah, we want to keep clean, so shower, wash our hands, right? Uh, cleanliness is a, a big deal. And in, in the Bible, um, there were also lots of rules about keeping clean. Because sometimes if we don't, like, wash our hands before we eat, what can happen? If they're, yeah, it might get dirt on our food. It doesn't taste good, right? If we're, especially if we're, like, eating pizza, right? Or, like, a hot dog or something like that, right? Yeah, we can get dirty, but also if we're like in school and people are sneezing and coughing all over the place and we don't wash our hands, we can get germs. I think we've all experienced like with COVID, everybody always the reminders, wash your hands, wear a mask, do all those things, right? Because germs can be around and people can get sick, right? Well, in the Bible, there were a lot of times when people were getting sick and everybody was trying to make sure that everybody would stay healthy, right? Well, there's another thing that we do when we talk about in the church, and we just kind of had a, a song that we sang about, about water, right? Come to the water of life, really pretty song, right? And there's another thing that we do in the church to kind of clean ourselves, and we do it a lot with, with babies here in the church. Does anybody know, do you know what that is? Yeah, baptism, right? And that's another way we talk about cleaning ourselves in, or being washed in baptism so that we can be part of this community of God that we call the church, right? That kind of makes us kind of members of the church or part of the church, part of God's body in the world, right? And so water and cleaning is kind of important uh, for us in our traditions and the way we, we talk about things, right? And we learn a lot about it from our readings today. And people that get healed, and in our Old Testament reading for today, there's a, a person who's told to go wash in the Jordan River, which was a, a pretty small river. It wasn't like the big river from where he was from. But he does, and he is made clean. So sometimes we got to keep clean, wash our hands, get showers when we're supposed to. My boys don't like to get showers still. I'm telling on them right now. They're not here. Um, but it's good to, to stay clean uh, as well. Okay? So let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the, the gift of water, um, that your water cleanses us in body, but also in mind and in spirit, as a sign of welcoming all of us uh, into the church, into your body. We ask that you continue to, to bless and lead our, our young people, inspire them in all that they say and in all that they do. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The first reading is from Second Kings. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, 
I thought that for me, he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you, do not, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company. He came and stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. thanks the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in my congregation. Great are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have good understanding. God's praise endures forever. I will give thanks. I will give thanks to the The second reading is from 2 Timothy. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, with eternal glory. The saying is sure, if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them that before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one who approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, Rightly explaining the word of truth. The word of the Lord. Alleluia.
Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace be with you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Pray with me, please. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of all of our hearts, may they be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I think it's safe to say that many of us have experienced illnesses and injuries. Some of us, maybe more so than others, some of our injuries may have been broken bones, burns, bumps, or multiple shoulder dislocations. That would be me. We have all been sick, and some of us can testify to the effects of COVID, right? And some of us and or our loved ones have battled or are battling cancers. Then there are the emotional and psychological scars from traumatic events in our lives that can lead to anxiety and depression. Our injuries and illnesses can make us feel isolated and alone sometimes. Like, remember when you were sick as a child and, like, all your friends got to go outside and play and you had to, like, watch them from the window? Anybody ever have that experience, watching other kids play while... Your mom or dad said, nope, not you, go back to bed, eat your chicken soup, right? We might feel like we are on the outside looking in at the rest of the world. We not, might not be able to fully participate at work, at school, or church. We might not be able to play a sport, ride a bike, jog, or even some of us walk. Some of us may struggle to get out of bed or get out the door some days just because of how we may be feeling. Our injuries, illnesses, and ailments often keep us from being part of a community, whether that community is our workplace, our church, our teams, or even our own families. While everyone is out and about enjoying life, we may find ourselves as outsiders, alienated as foreigners who have been cast out and marginalized or bordered up by our injuries, our illnesses, and our ailments. That was the experience for the ten lepers in our gospel for this morning. Jesus and his followers were on their way to Jerusalem. They've kind of been on their way to Jerusalem for quite a few chapters now. And they're most certainly taking the scenic route on the way to Jerusalem. And the scripture tells us that they were traveling through a region between Samaria and Galilee. Last week I mentioned the prophet Habakkuk speaking about living in the meantime or the in-between time. Now this place in between or in the borderlands would be kind of like the in-between place rather than the time. This is the in-between place, the borderlands in which people don't always cross the borders. Sometimes the borders cross them. And borders are oftentimes places full of people from both sides of the border, meaning they come from different backgrounds, different languages, religions, traditions, different ways of seeing and experiencing the world. 
Some people may tell tales of when their people controlled the land and resources on the other side of the border. And those stories may vilify the folks on the other side. And other people may have family and friends on both sides and feel conflicted as they look across those borders and boundaries. And some people may even remember older tales of when there were no borders, there were no sides, no boundaries. There were just people, one people, one nation, or one civilization. In this case, this particular case in our gospel, some may have remembered stories of a united Israel long ago. But it is in this border region, this in-between place, that the ten lepers, united in their affliction, came to Jesus at a distance and called out to him, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Jesus, have pity on us. Jesus, have compassion on us. Now, they don't specifically ask for healing. They simply ask to be seen, to be heard, and to be included somehow, whether it be through charity or simply a recognition of their existence. And Jesus obliges. Notice the scripture tells us that, quote, when Jesus saw them. When Jesus saw, saw them as they were, Jesus said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. Now, the reason Jesus does this is because only the priest could determine if someone was cured or healed of their leprosy. If a person was recognized as healed or cured, then they would be considered clean and they would be permitted to join the rest of the community as a full participant. They would be able to cross the border from unclean and unhealthy and gain entry back into the community. So the ten did as Jesus had commanded, and all ten of them were made clean, but only one of them realized that he had been healed and turned back to praise God with a loud voice. As he approached Jesus, the man prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And the scripture tells us that this man was a foreigner. But not only was he a foreigner, he was also a Samaritan. Now, this is the part of the story where everybody would boo. Boo, right? A Samaritan, right? And Jesus then raised a few rhetorical questions, perhaps. Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? As though Jesus didn't know the answer, right? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And then Jesus said to the man, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. In this story, there are three different Greek words used for the healing or cleansing that takes place. The first one that shows up is one that means to be made clean. The second one is a, a word that means to be healed. And the last one that Jesus uses for the Samaritan, sozo, meaning to be made well, to be made whole, to be made complete or we can say, to be saved. Each of these words indicates the different ways that a person can be restored to the community. Notice that the other nine don't have their healing or cleansing revoked because they didn't turn back to thank Jesus. They did as Jesus had told them, and they were cleansed, they were healed, they were restored. They were true followers of the customs and traditions of their ancestors. They went to the priests as Jesus had commanded, and just as the law had demanded, and once they were recognized as clean, they would be able to wash themselves, be restored fully to the community, and they could once again participate in the religious and cultural life of the community, and everything goes back to normalcy. The Samaritan couldn't do that. The Samaritan would not have been accepted by the priest by the sheer fact that he was a Samaritan. He was an outsider. 
The borders and boundaries would have been re-erected in Galilee or Judea or wherever they went to visit the priests. The Samaritan would have been denied entry. He would never have been able to experience full citizenship and inclusion. He would not have found wholeness or completeness as a foreigner or as an outsider looking in. But it is Jesus' words of salvation that knock down the borders and boundaries of the heart that are often erected to exclude or to deny a person's full humanity, which would render the person incomplete, unclean, or unwell. It is the foreigner in this story, the Samaritan, that Jesus comments to make whole. The Samaritan is made complete. The Samaritan is saved by being brought into the community of God. If we're honest, we are not well as a society. Our body politic is not well. It is far from being whole or complete. Think about the way that politicians or pundits or even preachers, have referred to people from different nationalities, religious traditions, abilities, accusing immigrants and refugees of bringing diseases or that they are murderous or rapists, and some some might be good people. We put borders on our hearts and minds that keep us from being complete or whole. We, collectively, in our body politic, are in need of healing, of cleansing, of being made well and whole. In short, we need to be saved. Jesus invited his disciples and his followers to be complete and whole human beings by seeing others as people in need of healing, in need of grace, in need of a community that loves, supports, and accepts people, no matter their illness, their ailments, their injuries, their nationalities, their languages, religious preferences, and the list can go on and on. None of us are whole or complete until all of us are whole and complete. None of us are free until all of us are free in body, mind, and spirit. The borders and the boundaries that we erect and put up between other human beings needs to be torn down. Here at Our Saviors, we have moved forward with partnering with community members who are providing physical healing and wholeness. But we here as a church are called to provide spiritual and physical healing as well. Hunger and poverty are social diseases that we can address to try to alleviate as a church and community. But first, we have to see those who are hungry and hurting and ailing Addressing the root causes of poverty and homelessness are issues that we can be more actively engaged in. Providing welcome to immigrants and refugees is also what we're called to do as part of Christ's body. And I think that's a message that Jesus points to in the gospel this morning. There is a lot of illnesses, injuries, ailments, and diseases in our world that we as the church are called to help address and alleviate so that those who feel alienated and alone on the outside looking in can find a loving community that welcomes them, walks with them, and shows them love and compassion just as Jesus did all those 10 lepers and one of them who just happened to be a foreigner, an outsider, a Samaritan. We are called to include, not exclude. We are called to break down those barriers and borders that are placed on our hearts and our minds by people and forces that wish to divide and conquer. We are called to open our hearts and our minds to provide healing and wholeness. So may we as the church continue to be a community that welcomes all, bear one one another's burdens, and provides healing and wholeness in body, in mind, and in spirit. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. Gracious God, we give you thanks for bishops, pastors, and deacons, inspire leaders of the church to proclaim your mighty deeds, that your saving faith may be known to all. Hear us, O oh God. Majestic God, we give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest. Break down boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deforestation. Hear us, O oh God. Mighty God, we give you thanks for those in our community, nation, and world who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those who are marginalized by race, ethnicity, or religion. Hear us, O God. Merciful God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of those in need. 
restore to community those who are stigmatized by illness, feel rejected, or who live in isolation. Send healing to all who suffer. Hear us, O God. Faithful God, we give you thanks for the healing ministries of this congregation. Equip those who visit, care, and pray for the sick. Give insight to doctors, nurses, and home health care aides, and all practitioners of medical arts. Hear us, O God. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your faithful people who have gone before us to your glory. Renew our trust in your eternal promises of mercy, redemption, and new life. Hear us, O God. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to shine a, share a sign of Christ's peace with your neighbor.
pray. Gracious God, in your great love you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remember us in your kingdom, Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the congregation may be seated for our announcements. Uh, first, I want to thank all those who came out this week to help clean up a little bit of the rummage sale. And a special thanks to uh, the NFL, no, not the National Football League, uh, but Newfound Life uh, and members of Newfound Life who came and, and helped us as well um, with uh, some of the cleanup. There's a little bit more to uh, clean up with the rummage sale, but also a huge thank you. And we didn't get a chance to thank Kathy last week, so thank you, Kathy, for organizing. The, uh, the rummage sale. So, thank you. Uh, there is room over there. So, uh, Jerry was able to set up some tables for fellowship. So, there will be fellowship following uh, the service. And if you would like to sign up for coffee hour, please see Chris right there. Or she'll track you down um, as well. So. Our noisy uh, offering is for UNICEF uh, for October. If you want to pick up one of these in the back, um, it folds up into this nice little uh, thing that you can put your coins or dollars into uh, to support uh, UNICEF for the month of October. Or when we have those pots going around, you can throw it in there too. Make a nice little noise with your change, which is always, always fun. We do have some uh, exciting upcoming events. Uh, I did mention briefly in the uh, sermon today that we have some of our partners who are doing some health and wholeness work um, on our campus. The old education wing is now uh, kind of a health and wellness uh, center, and we're kind of the spirituality center, amen? Um, and so we're gonna be doing like a uh, dedication blessing of the, the new, uh, newly refurbished uh, facility where there's some Pilates, I think a chiropractor, uh, a gym, uh, and other, um, other people and partners providing health uh, and wellness, uh, and then we can do our part as uh, spiritual wellness as well. And so we're going to do a, a special ceremony, and we're also going to have some music, because music is healing, right? Um, and therapeutic for many of us. Um, and we're going to have a, a big band here in the sanctuary on Sunday, October 23rd. Uh, so Paul McDonald and his big band will be here to do a concert uh, Paul is a, a member of Chapel of Peace Lutheran Church in Inglewood, um, where he served as their uh, council president as well. So he's going to come over here and, and do a concert with his band. Um, there is a, another event that's coming up next Sunday, October 16th. So those who are interested in uh, the mayoral race uh, here in Long Beach, uh, there is a candidate forum uh, sponsored by LA Voice and a number of our congregations. Uh, to make us better informed citizens uh, and to be better informed as far as uh, the next mayor. So if you want to check it out, there's a Zoom information on there if you can't make it in person, but also it'll be in person next Sunday um, from 4 to 5.30, and you can hear about the, the people running for mayor um, of Long Beach. So that should be uh, pretty exciting. Um, I think those are the main announcements that we have for now, there'll be a lot more coming forward because we have a lot of activity that's going to be happening October, November, December, and whoo, Christmas is just around the corner, right? So, uh, and speaking of, if you want to purchase anything from the Christmas room, uh, you can do so now up through Christmas, I think. So, and I think those are all the announcements that we have for right now. Did I miss anything? The other announcement, again, I promised I was going to remind everybody, the sending hymn, again, those hymnals, it's a foreign concept, it seems, nowadays, um, but uh, hymn number 453, Baptized and Set Free. So as you're uh, paging through there, please stand as you are able and receive a blessing. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, 
guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God.